too many buttons. It's been a while, hasn't it? And my setup here is uh, driving me crazy. Give me a second. Uh, am I live? Is this working? This is looking good. So, new job. Uh, I love the new job, but it's taking up a lot of energy and uh, blah. I need practice. So, from now on, every Tuesday and Thursday, we'll do a little bit of Rust magic stuff, I guess. So, I forgot to take a picture. So, I changed my streaming setup here. And we had a routine, right? We kind of had this under control, I believe. And now not even my setup here is, forget it. So I changed my streaming setup. As, as most of you know, I've been streaming from my Mac, which you're seeing here, this desktop here. We are my Windows laptop, and then that was uh, audio never worked, and just logging around two laptops. So I finally got my, and you cannot see this because the cables are too short, but I got my Atom Mini Pro, Pro, which I am streaming through right now. So not the camera, the camera is still an OBS overlay, and all the, the stuff here on the screen, especially on the bottom, is still an OBS overlay. But having this external streamer that can stream stri straight to Twitch and then using OBS to, you, you know, that's kind of defeating the point. So ideally what I want, I want my Mac laptop, a tiny external monitor, this thing, and maybe something extra, but, but yeah, that's where it ends. Lock around as little gear as possible. No points of failure. A few wires, not multiple setups that, that will fight each other. And yes. So, but by using this external thing, I'm losing all my overlays. So it, it has a key and then What's nice is, I mean, this is this is a Raspberry Pi I just set up. Uh, it has a key here, and and it can in theory video key or picture in picture. So so we could put the camera in the picture in picture, or put the overlays on the on the key here. Um, but that needs some work. So that that's that's one part of the story. I want my Raspberry Pi, my Raspberry Pi. To be able to, to in a simple way, create, yeah, this keyboard is obviously connected here and not here, but, but create the, all the overlays and then feed them into, into the port one of the ATEM. And then I, then I can just either picture and picture them or key them in. Well, the key is not working because it's not the green screen, but that's part one. So I want something on my Pi that creates simple video screens. So that's one part of the story. Then what this ATEM also can do, and let me, is my ATEM software actually running? What it also can do, so this was using the upscreen key here, but let me fade you to black for, for a second. Sorry about that. But I don't want, I'm not allowed to show you my work, work stuff. So where is, ah, there it is. So yeah, so ha, fade to black for the win. So I'm going to go small and this is with my stream deck now. So too many buttons, so I, I think I can connect the Stream Deck to the to the Raspberry Pi and control everything from there. And then you have this uh, this media player thing. And let's just let's just take the Raspberry 
pi in here and you have to drag and then you have the switcher and then you have actually actually have a downstream here so so this is overlaid downstream you have upstream coming in you key it key it mix it and then downstream you do an overlay and this is programmable via the network so we have two places i'm going to turn this off because this raspberry is nice but so we have two places uh, where we can overlay stuff a upstream on one of the hdmi ports to, on hdmi one to be exactly then we can uh, overlay downstream create just key art so basically basically what Bose is it's screens so we have an empty screen and want to put stuff on that and yes we could have an x server and html and and all just overkill i want something super super simple so then they did a second project and you can not see it here you know this smart mirrors everybody's building i i had one ready to go for five years now and never built it and then i finally started to build it and the raspi is actually the reason it's only here because i had it lying around for that project and then there's this magic mirror project that everybody's using for that and it's okay it might be a cool project but the installation is a nightmare the configuration drove me crazy and you have to manually put in all these python modules in the right folders and then oh it didn't work because it crashed the web browser it was using so so and then i realized the smart mirror is also just a block of pixels where i want some information so the goal of this project and i decided to call this shival for whatever reason um No X server, no overlay. We just want uh, want data. And um, let me just so basically, this is an SSH SSH into into this system here. And then there's this little thing we always kind of forget, and that is. Come on, I can't type today. Well, that's the frame buffer device. The frame buffer device. So if I press enter here and go here. So basically, this is this is just a block of memory that's displayed on the HDMI out, and uh, I can just redo it, and you see it changes. And right now, I'm just using the U random device to to. I mean, I could can can also use. Uh, Def zero, and now it's all black again. And basically, that's what we want, right? We have a block of memory where we want to put pixels in that's constantly displayed. No overhead, no magic, no X, no Windows, no compositor. Just uh, so frame buffer device based uh, base info renderer in rust well they, this this will be better but uh, yeah just do do we have a rust yep we have a rust git ignore so and the license is mit as usual so we have a repository And I'm just gonna go here and get. I'm I'm typing too much on my Windows keyboard and and Windows shortcuts. I'm slowly turning into a Windows noob. So yeah, we're here. And let's do cargo in it. Let's init this as a lib. Cargo build. 
And now I could just go and cross compile. I mean, I could just um, oh my. So what I could do. Okay. Let's actually, I forgot to open the editor. Sorry for that. Let's, let's give you the nice. The, the main problem is I currently cannot show you the, the day project I'm working on. So I don't want to accidentally accidentally show you oh is, isn't this buttery smooth oh nice um and all external and hardware well i hope i'm still streaming yeah looks like it's still working so <coughs> So there's multiple things I want to do with this. I mean, I want a pluggable system. So I want users to just drop in a plugin into the directory and use that. I want a super simple configuration that's readable even by me. I want all the modules to run asynchronously, also because I want to learn a bit more about async in, in Rust. And I want this to run in a frame of in, in a window as well. So so we have multiple um multiple things going on. I mean we could just have a main and, and this is it, right? This is our boilerplate empty empty rust project, and we could just do cargo run. Oh, obviously, my bad. We said uh, it's it's a uh, it's a library, so obviously we have to add the binary if you want the binary, right? So the binary is shovel, and the source is uh, the pass. So it's been a while and I'm sorry this will be a bit rough for the first few days, but basically this is okay. The package is a library, but I also want to want a binary. So I can just cargo run this and nothing will happen. Right? I I could also say cargo build and say the target and i did some pre-setup for that uh, if you're interested uh, just ask me and i'll i put up some instructions later so target is arm it's unknown and i want linux and i want the the abi from from muscle um Build target arm. Oh, here comes the special magic, and I have to cheat because Rust doesn't know which linker to use. So I create a cargo directory. I create a dot cargo config file because. Yeah, th this always feels hacky. And then I say, if the target is, is, and let's actually copy this target. If the target is this, I hope I didn't mistype it before I, then the linker is, and that's what I installed earlier. It's actually arm. Linux, GNU, EABI, HF, uh, LD. So, so I, I just basically brew installed the ARM2 chain. So I can do this. Now it knows if it has this target, please link with this. And then if I
Did I mistype something? Arm unknown Linux. Oh, yes, I did. And obviously, say typo applies here. But basically, what I have now, if I go to target uh, ARM Linux, uh, I have the in the release directory. I have the um, the binary here, right? So. And I set up SSH key and everything. So what I could do is I could say copy target arm release cheval to pi at <coughs> and what I have here now. Well, if I SSH back in, I have cheval here, and I can run this. And it does nothing. Obviously, compiling, SCPing, SSHing, starting is kind of a little bit annoying. I really should start coding with music. This is a bit quiet here, but okay. Sorry about that. I, I, I'm practicing. But obviously, it would be much nicer if we could just do cargo run and run the. So that's why I want a window and a frame buffer version, and it knows what to do. So and and you know me, if if I want to use the frame buffer, there's only one thing that comes in mind, and that's uh, crates IO. I'm a big fan of mini FB. So this is basically so copy this to cargo. It's a dependency. We will clean it up later because technically it's a dependency only for this system. I'm not sure if it even would run on interesting point. Uh would run on ARM. So what I usually do, and here's a trick I learned just recently. I don't do a cargo build constantly. Builds take forever. Do cargo checks while you're coding. Usually you type a line. Is it working? Yeah. Type a line. Is it still compiling? So cargo check is so much faster. Well, this is part one. And now we want to go here. And I always just copy the example. I'm basically okay. The extern crate is a bit uh, last year, but... Tell you what, we just copy the whole frickin' example in. Right? Does it compile? Yep. Does it run? First time takes a moment. We have a window. We have a window. And yeah, maybe we just write I in here. I don't know what whatever. Hmm. You want a green screen, right? So let's let let's let's actually write a green screen. So um what's the color order? I have no idea. So is it R B G We we'll just figure it out. So we'll just draw assume It's 32 bits. <coughs> and we have a wide window. So that's part one of it. So we have a wide window and actually, um, actually let's say if, I what do we want if 
I mean, basically what, what we will do later is for y equals zero to height, for x equals zero to width, width, which, and then we can just say buffer, let, let's say O for offset equals equals this, right? And let's say O equals um, Y times width plus X. So the standard, oh, yeah, <clears throat> too much C coding. So the standard loop, loop over the lines and then loop over the pixels in the line and we still get a white screen and just to prove that it's working we say if x smaller width divided by 2 else It's just to prove that it's actually working. So left half is white, right half is black. And and just because black, I want to know if this is red, the red pixel. So let's see. Okay, so red, green, blue, probably. Nice, We we have a frame buffer. We need to talk about scaling and stuff, but right now I don't care about that. What I do care about is... Um, so, obviously mini FB won't work on the Raspberry Pi. I mean, we could uh, do our build and let's see what will happen. I mean, it might just map to the frame buffer device. <laughs> it might just work for free. Yes, yeah, sure. So, uh, yeah, not really. And it starts to build X stuff, and I don't want X and Wayland and X11. And nope. Nope, 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 nope. So, what we actually want is we want to split this, let's call it buffer, window buffer, frame buffer. Let's actually actually call it frame buffer. So, not, 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 not sure yet, but basically we say, okay, mod frame buffer. And uh, I, I'm not sure how, how to do this, so just follow along. So we have a frame buffer, right? And let's do this step by step. So we have a struct. Mm. Nope, nope, nope. Let's call it window. I know frame buffer would be the better better name, but let's call this window. But you so we have a struct window, and then we have an implementation for window. And basically, I want um, this and this call abstracted away. So. My window has a pub public function. Why is this not? Tell me. This is better. Has a public function while is while done. 
And for now, this just returns false. It's it's never done, right? And then we have a pop function mm, next frame, which basically returns nothing. And obviously, we have a pop function new. Not sure if we want to go into a builder pattern later, but uh, agreed. So, what I want to do here, let window equal window new. And yes, this should be window, and this should be window. Right? Why are you? Okay. So this is our window new. And then we say while, while not window it, window done. Done, do something with it and then say window dot next frame, right? Simple as that. So, this window has a width, which is U size, it has a height. Oh, I cannot type today. Sorry about that. And then we have this uh, buffer thing here, this here. And all this is, is opaque, the, the user cannot see it, just abstracting away the window logic. And this is a vec u32. Right, so obviously, and for now, we just go with the width. The width was 640. The height was, we're just keeping some set flexibility for us later here. And the buffer is, is <sighs> why? Okay. So, and this basically, I want the escape key, so, so we copy this here and say, oh, we don't have the window. Oh, this is also window. <clears throat> Collisions, not a fan. So we just use mini FB here and then say this has a window, mini FB window. And then here we just say Window, mini FB window new, test. Magic numbers, but uh, any FB window options default, right? Is this actually working? It's been so long, I'm, I'm super sorry, but, but maybe we can get something started here. Why? Oops. What is the key, key? Where is
So, oh. <laughs> yep. And this is obviously... What don't you like about this? Mismatch types. Oh, yep. Which we cannot do. So yeah, let's go the on wrap or else panic route here. Not not a fan, but Oops. Not a fan here, but <sighs> yeah. If we can't open the window, we panic. So next frame actually also gets a self which it doesn't use. So while, so we should have an, I am pretty sure this should not have worked. What did we do? Um, what the? Oh, we didn't save. Okay, and here we, I mean, that was one of the reasons we wanted our main clean, right? Use window. I'm not sure which button I hit there. Something is fishy today. And yep. So basically we took the example and now we are we are hiding away the specific code. And I have no idea. Okay, we never do the update. So it probably never. I mean, we're copying code to a different place. So maybe we should copy all the code. Good completion. Nope. Oh, okay. So this needs to be mutable. Then this needs to be mutable. And What did we... Let's say... Mm, Self.win is open and... Wait. Okay, it's not. We we just want this condition exactly. What did we miss? I mean, do we need to limit the?
update rate. What did I miss? What did I miss? I mean, this this will need some clears, some serious cleanup. Ah. Uh. failed an update. Why is this failing an update? Oh, yeah, my bad, because we do a back new here, and we should do it with... Uh, can we do width times height here? Actually, oh, my, my notifications from the company start. Uh, Thank you. Um, it should be Rust Vec new with sites. Didn't I just go there? Dot reserve, okay. S dot buffer dot reserve width times height. And the type should already be correct. I have the feeling that we're that we're reading from a buffer that's too I am sorry, I have to turn this off real quickly or I will go crazy. Windows. Windows is so broken. What did we do wrong? I mean, <laughs> this is what we had before, right? We just moved the code. What am I missing? It is a buffer initialization. Okay. Be be my guest. I don't even want to know. So all we want to do now is is have this loop here. in here, right? So how do we get the buffer? Closure? 
closure. Rust fn once. Maybe fn is enough. So what we could do here, um, names to be render frame that has a mutable self and gets uh, gets a function. gets a function, okay, slow down, I don't want to lose you. So basically I want to pass in the function that then receives the buffer. So I've never used closures in, in Rust, so Believing versus knowing. I'm a scientist, so I know. There's no room for believing. There's just no room for believing. So what I want to do here is I want to say um, window render frame with buffer. Basically that's, that's the syntax we want, right? And don't ask me the tab for the spaces thing here while my editor is going haywire. And now it's going to tell me, oh, wait. And this now takes a function. Right? And this function is of type. How do you set the function on a closure in Rust? The documentation still drives me crazy sometimes. So we need to be fn mutable. Okay. We were in the right place. Okay, so
it's not my day today. Oh, it's not my day today. What? Wait, what? Okay, we're gonna cheat. We're gonna cheat. Nope. I have no idea how this works. Rust passing FNU to function. Okay, so this would be too obvious, but okay, it needs to be a dynamic reference. It's mutable. It receives a vec of U32 a u size and a u size and returns a nothing actually let's uh Um, I, I'm writing too much C code. Don't do this at home. So this should be okay, right? We pass everything in we need. This is cleaner anyway. And then we just do window dot render frame uh, render frame, right? And then obviously um, we have to pass in the reference to this. Hey reference to this cannot borrow as is declared as mutable oh true okay and here where And then all we have to do is call it. So 
may just call it uh, and this doesn't work but we can borrow it as mutable This, this is not the interface I want in the end, but we have our white and red, uh, red window again. And the nice part is uh, our main, excuse me, our main doesn't know what window is actually doing. I'm not sure about the syntax here yet, but um, let's start slow. So, sorry, need a zip. So. And now we're going to split this. So, window mini FB. We could have probably done this earlier because basically, to be honest, I mean, okay, this is gone. We have a trait that is called window. Probably, do we even want to make this dynamic? Nope. We just gonna keep the interfaces in sync manually, right? So, if I do more window mini fb here and then say pop use window mini fb window as window window right No window in, what do you mean no? File not found for module. Okay, this is not what I wanted. This is not what I wanted. I mean, this still runs. And what we could do now is uh, Rust config if. So, so the problem here it still is if we do a build for the other platform, it's going to do all this mess that we don't, right? Don't want, right? <coughs> oh, the, the whole thing we wanted to get out of. So step one is we don't want this as a dependency. We want this as a target dependency. So we have a target dot 
let's say config dependent target arch and, and this is so basically this is saying if you're building for x68 use mini fb and otherwise don't so this still works here locally but our cross build will say mini fb what the hell are you talking about so so what we want to do is uh, basically say uh, here target architecture the same as the tomo uh, this here <coughs> and that's why i wanted it one layer deeper but and probably we need this for both here so this means mac os or x68 still works arm window what are you talking about dude and this is what we want i mean now we are in the driver's seat right so let oh nice that i can edit this i don't want to edit this and i don't want you to steal my hot keys so <coughs> we're a bit naive so oh we have basic frame buffer extra abstraction Is there maybe the Linux FB? I'm not sure. Does not do with drawing of any kind. No, let's use the other one. So, we're gonna do this. And actually, let me go to documentation. But basically, what we want, like we did here. We want this as a dependency only if we're building for ARM. And <coughs> this is a hack. We should really use a compile time switch. But basically, local version still running. And this is pulling in the frame buffer. So you, can, you know what's coming now, right? Touch, window frame buffer and window is probably not the good name and I didn't want to call it frame buffer because I knew I wanted to use a frame buffer library and now we have the window clash but yeah so again we copy the interface We keep the widths, we keep the height, we keep a buffer. We don't know if we use that. Uh, this will probably work a little bit different. None of this. Uh, done is always false. We just run forever. Render frame basically does the same. Maybe some post processing in next frame. We just don't know, right? So if we go here, and that's why I really didn't want it in the main, but you know what? So basically what we're saying is, uh, if we're under Windows, use this mini FB base. If we under x86, use this window mini FB based window. If we are on ARM, use this frame buffer based window, right? So, oops. Yeah, maybe this is not the smartest idea. So, it builds. So if we do the SCP, did I build release? Yeah. 
and go here and just run this. It will just run forever. It will not draw anything. I mean, it will not draw anything. I just wanted to make sure I see what you see. It was a bit scary for a second, um, but it's running. So all we have to do is fill this initialization code and stuff. So unfortunately, this frame buffer <coughs> crate is a bit undocumented. So I have something repair repaired. Yeah, prepared. I believe. So, what we do here, and I do the initialization this time before the, so, we have a mutable frame buffer. And basically, uh, use frame buffer. Maybe we can go a bit further here. Maybe we can, because I know we'll need the frame buffer here. Well, maybe we just need the frame buffer. So we say this here. And yes, the docs here are a bit shoddy, but frame buffer new, new, and we tell it which device to be configurable maybe at some point and then just unwrap or else maybe it's time to just um, I mean okay do we want to panic here To do error handling. Yes, the usual. And actually, I want this to stand out a bit, so I'm gonna. I'm gonna. Makes it also easier to read all the braces. So now we have a frame buffer. So what we probably want to do, frame buffer, frame buffer, thanks for the auto completion. And here just say frame buffer, frame buffer. So one is the one inside, one is the one outside. Yeah, I don't want to use a shorthand. So let's just build this just to see so it's still building obviously here we could also use the check but it's so fast um, so with a frame buffer so we don't need the size and we don't want to to play around with it so we have the frame buffer and we have this screen info this was screen info and that has the resolutions in the in it so it's uh, var screen info oh i don't know which key that is i think my l key is switching tabs xres and if you look closely this is u32 but we used u size for the other one i wish they could decide on one way but they can't so and this is virus and now the buffer So the buffer size calculation is a bit ugly, cause 
We have something called a line length because um, for optimization reasons, if the screen is 640, the buffer might still be 1024 for, and, and have holes basically on the side of the screen. So we need to do this. Uh, then let's just let's just uh, initialize the buffer outside here and, and pass that in because this is going to be a vector. Hey, Jengtron, thanks for the follow. At least my overlays are still working. Next week I'm gonna break them. Um, so we want to fill this with, with zero and be very explicit. Zero U32 and be very explicit to use the line lengths here, not the widths times the height, which we probably should have taken from here. Should have taken from here. So this is our buffer. So this is our buffer here. Yes, I could use the shorthand. And while we're at it, I mean, no pain, no gain. Just for symmetry reasons mostly and yes maybe now we could use the shorthand but i don't want to and then we can also say we instantly return this right did i miss anything this is initialization and that's all i want to see for the moment right so let's get rid of Actually, let's keep it like this and we can build it and oh, so the line length is in the fixed screen info. Obviously, yeah, I I fought with this documentation for, for a while before I made it uh, output anything, but so we have. So we have uh, a build now. We can SCP that over. And if we run it, it doesn't panic. But we also don't have any output. We still have our cursor blinking, but I'm going to ignore that. For the, but but it's, it's running and it, until I press Control Z. And basically, um, we need two buffers here. So this buffer here that we're rendering to is not actually uh, putting stuff to the frame buffer. So the frame buffer... Um, How do we do this best? So, okay. I was just thinking how, how to explain this and the frame buffy has a method that's called bright frame. Come on. That writes this U8 buffer, and that is not our U32 buffer. In our case, it's 16 bit. We, we could get a lot of that uh, info, not here, from, from this here. Um, and there's a lot of magic involved. So what we basically do is uh, we cheat and just uh, have a second buffer. So am I in the frame buffer thing now? So we have a second buffer. And 
basically it is the same, but it's U8. And it's actually uh, two U8s. Let me check that it's actually two U8s per pixel. Why? I think the line lengths Oh, thank you. I think this should be times two. Yeah, the extra S here, it's just this temporary that, that I have here. I could just remove this and return it right away, but, but this way I can do like this to look at it before I return it. Yeah, this extra S is, is also happens when I I have this 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 alt S option S twitch. I'm old school, and sometimes you don't hit an option, and then you just have the S. And yeah, I've been hit by stray S's in in code. So <laughs> thanks for the hint. Um, so we have two buffers now, and and we we could have this render frame r render into the correct buffer right away. But then that would have to handle the bit mode. And we just want to hand out a U32 buffer, R, alpha, red, green, blue, each one byte, and then we handle the mapping. So what we can do is just brute force for now for y in zero dot dot self dot widths for x in zero zero dot dot self dot height and then we have the o equals um and here we have to be careful y times we need the line lengths here i believe which is a bit a bit sucky So this is the offset in the array, and we have, in this case, we have two bytes, and we could multiply that in. I like like this to be be very explicit. So this is the. So what we can do now is we can say frame o times two, plus zero, equals. Let's just make make everything white. So. And, and this is actually dangerous because we assume we know our output format, but basically let's fill everything white, right? We iterate over every pixel, calculate this, and probably we could, could fold the times two just in here. But I like this because it's more explicit because I know here why I do plus one and plus zero. So let's see probably does not have this field. Oh, A, it is self here. Oh, true. So, so this is becoming a bit uh, long here. Why is my checker not working anymore? Oh, because different platform. Window does not have this field. That is right. That is correct. Oh, come on. This, this is getting a bit... So... We have code, we copy that. Index out of bounds. So why is the index out of bounds? I mean, 
looking at the numbers, it, it's hitting the end of the buffer, so we're probably writing too much. But I want to you to follow along a bit. Thank you. It it's in the unwind, so it's not really really oh did be maybe we should not be compiling release. And now we have to be careful because we don't want to copy over release. And this is telling us, a, I mean, still black screen, but this is telling us a little bit more now. Index out of bounds at window frame buffer line 43. So I'm pretty sure our O here is wrong, but why? Do you see it? This is gonna be noisy, but we only, yeah, compiling it before copying it would be nice. Let's go to the other window, old trick, so it doesn't have to do all the window updates. Notes counting up. It's getting closer. Where do we have the width height? Where do we do the boo-boo? Oh, you see this? We need two bytes per pixel here and not here. That was such a stupid. <coughs> hmm? Why? Oh. Why width x height? I think it's more like this. Crazy days, crazy days. Nothing happens. Nothing happens here either. So, oh. And you know why? We copy into the frame, but we never write the frame. So, self dot frame buffer dot write frame. And then we just pass it a reference to the frame because it's read only. It's probably going to tell us we need to use the return value. Okay. We see nothing, but we see nothing. Maybe this times two was... Wait, what? And it's telling us
maybe this times two is wrong completely. What have I been drinking? It might be possible that the line length is in bytes and not in pixels. But now we're back here where it's writing, so... Oh! The line length is in bytes, so... We, we do the times two here, so we have to divide by two here, right? Uh, there, there was a there was a was a times two missing somewhere, or divided by two in this case. So this will be super slow. It's not crashing. Shall we go to the look a white screen? Ignore the fact uh, that the uh, I cannot point here. But ignore for, for a moment the fact that the cursor is blinking there. We, we'll, we'll just ignore that. So basically, I mean, this is nice. We can write white here, right? So um, let's say, and th this, this, is, this is very classic. Let R be Y percent 255. So this, this is very GBX and blue. Blue just be zero, right? And now what we want, we want a high byte and we want a low byte, right? So we want a low byte here and a high byte here, right? So somehow we need to get from RGB to high byte and low byte. And um, th this is pretty straightforward. Let, let's, let's assume we have our RGB and I know it's 565. So this is U16. So getting getting the low byte out of that, the, the high byte out of that. I mean, it's basically, okay. We take RGB 565, shift that by eight. We want the high byte and then just mask that with FF, right? So we don't get any noise, but since this is Rust, we have to explicitly cast to U8. And then basically, uh, this is the same, but we don't shift. We just say take RGB 565 and it was FF. Thanks for the auto completion and cast that to. This is the easy part, right? So if we run this, we should still get the white screen. Now, this is going to be interesting. How do we get the RGB 565 from the 888? So basically what we have is let's do nibbles. So that's our red value. G value and the B value, right? Pretty straightforward, nothing special here. So what we want as a result, it's it's five six five. So it's one two three four five red, one two three one two three six green, and then 
like five blue, right? So how how do we how do we do this? So we could just mass them down, but actually we want these four. We don't want these four because that that's the least significant bits, and we want the high significant bits. So four. Let's let's go crazy here on the braces. So what we want to do, we want R, and we have to tell it's Rust. So make it a U16, so when we shift, it doesn't rotate stuff out. And then we basically mask out the bits we want. And the bits we want is actually five bits. And this is actually F8, agreed? So we mask out XF8, and that's it. It's still in the lower byte, so we have to shift it up into the upper byte by 8. And there are better ways of doing this. There are better ways of doing this. It's just very, very, very explicit. And then we take the result of this. So red is fine now. And then we OR this together. And green is going to be interesting because we want six bits. So we want one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. And this is basically F. And as we can clearly see, and I'm getting old, it's D, eight plus four, eight, nine, A, B, C. Wait, what? Mm, 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 mm. It's eight FC, right? It is FC. So we do the same. We say we want GSU sixteen. We want to mask it with XFC and then it, it's kind of in the middle so we have this this three byte offset so we actually want to shift it by three bytes right three bits sorry and there is a brace missing here right and since we know what's coming we do the same with blue here we just copy and uh, blue is again let's let's complete this so it's it's again five bits so it's again f8 so it's f8 but in this case we have blue here so basically we have it here we have it here so we want to shift it right by three Oh man, I didn't do bit shifting color stuff in forever. So now we expect a red increase by Y and green increase by X. And I mean, would be nice if it compiled first. It was... Okay, it's complaining about too many parentheses. Yeah, I don't really care. A, it doesn't crash, shall we? Shall we switch? Look at this. Look at this. So this is nice. <laughs> but obviously we don't want dummy data. We want our... Um, we want our real data, so, okay. Let O equal Y times self dot width plus X. So this is our offset in our real buffer. And our real buffer is RG ARGB. So we go self dot buffer and 
so this is U32, and what we want now is basically let R be A R G B R G B shift 24 and S U8. Just cut it off. No, oh, wait, this is alpha. This is green, this is blue, and then just I mean, this this part of the bit shifting I leave to you. This is so straightforward. And yes, this could just mask out, but <coughs> right, so this is getting the source and this is creating the target. And this is highly unoptimized code. So if I run this now with a backtrace on, what do we expect? Yes, a white and red screen. So the nice thing is, from now on we don't have to touch the pie at all. It can just, just do cargo run. We can just do this and, I mean, okay, okay. Let's say, let's make this a bit more complex and please don't do this alike. This ever Let's say we are in the left half and y is smaller than height by two. Then we want, we just set alpha. We already have red down there, so let's say green. Green else white. Uh, and this is, please, 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 if I catch you doing this in, in any production code anywhere, better get ready to get fired, so. And then basically let's just do the same because I'm lazy. Oh, we just said we had the red here, right? So maybe we want the red here. And what's missing is the blue. So, you run this locally, we cuff. Okay, we have green, red, white, and blue. Let's just verify with our code. Let's just verify with our code. So, it's on the left half and the upper half, so it's green. It's in the left half and it's the lower half, so it's white. It's in the right half and in the upper half, so it's red. And this right half, lower half is blue. So it's green, red, white, blue, exactly what we want. So let's build this for a frame of a device and copy this over and run it. And we have green, red, white, blue. And green. I, I cheated and put my key, if you remember our overlay, I put my key into green. So you can see I, I have the effect I want. It's not exactly the right green I picked for the key, but basically we can overlay the Raspberry image now that we create with the frame of a device to my stream. <coughs> and I actually think that makes me very, very happy already. Yeah, oh. <laughs> okay. Add abstract, add abstraction layer for mini FB and frame buffer. 
So as I said, super long days at work right now. Um, so only short streams, but I aim for Tuesdays and uh, and Thursdays. Next up, uh, probably replace this monster here with something a little bit more useful, but for now, you can check the code here and it's all there. This was horrible. This was horrible. But hey, it worked. So let's see what, what we get out of this. Um, and the autofocus on my camera is acting up again. It's turned off. I don't know why. So thanks for all the fish. See you on Thursday. Have fun. Bye-bye.